Hello everyone, my name is Falling Hertz. This is a completely different video than what I normally post. Um, it's not a podcast and it has a webcam. No, you don't care about that. <laughs> You're here because you are at least casually invested in the Overwatch community. As you may have seen on my channel, I don't really post anything about Overwatch. But I am casually invested in the game. I do enjoy it. It's fun to play from time to time. And one person that I know who plays it the most... My fellow Popcorner podcast co-host, we just Ayo. recorded an episode, but um, you know, we got some Overwatch news today, and uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, how are you doing, you know, just in life, but then, how are you doing, you know, with the game? Well, my, my good friend, let's just look back to 2019. You know, you, you say you're a casual Overwatch fan. Well, yeah. as me as a big fan of Overwatch, who's been there since the beginning, since 2016, there was an era of Overwatch 1 where there was a big drought. Uh, we were getting, literally, we were getting legit starved of zero content. And you want to know why? Good sir. Why was that, sir? Because we were promised in 2019 at BlizzCon, Overwatch 2. You might be asking, why a sequel? Why, right? Why, yeah. Jeff Kaplan? Why are we getting a sequel to Overwatch? That's a fair question. Why not just add new heroes, new maps? Well, guess what? You're waiting to get Heroes and Maps because Overwatch 2's coming. When? We'll never know at the time because they just went dark. But we were promised PvE. Tons of it. Skill trees, hero progression, so many more. So many things that would just bedazzle the whole entire Overwatch as a whole, as, as the franchise goes on. Yeah. So we waited two, three years almost yep. with nothing. Not a, not a single hero, not a single map, not a single update of balance changes, nothing. Nothing. What's today? March 16th, 2023? That's we got a roadmap. That's what your computer says. We got a roadmap. And then, here we are. Everything we were promised for three full years, scrapped. All of it. Not one is promised. It's still here. <laughs> That's how my day's going. Cool. How about you? Yeah, we have a roadmap to go over today. And um, with that being said... We're going to go over everything that there is for Season 5, 6, six and, and so 7, forth. and beyond. So for Season 5, we have a few different things. We've got limited time modes. Uh, we've got the Quest Watch, which feeds into the theme of mischief and magic, which, as you explained, yeah, with these events, is kind usually of the, like the Junkenstein type. Right? Oh, for the... Is, is that what, like with Quest Watch? Is yeah, for Quest Watch. Yeah, it's going to be... Probably is gonna be. Yeah, it's going to be just like your typical event where you'll probably get some skins, some challenge rewards, but you'll probably get yourself some good PvE-esque type thing, or yeah. maybe just a new PvP mode. They might do something different with a PvP mode. Right. Like right now we have, um, I think it's called like Star Watch or something. See, that's actually interesting because what Blizzard really did do is they saw how hard it was for people to log onto the game when they launched Overwatch 2. Yeah. It had some so, pretty bad connection issues so and just they, getting into the game. What they did was they eliminated half their player base by, um, you know, basically destroying their promises from 2019. Really interesting if you think about it. Uh, but as I already said, the uh, season's theme will be Mischief in Magic. Yep. Uh, we're going to get a new cinematic reveal trailer, which is probably going to be focused on, on what, Sojourn. Sojourn more than likely, is the hero. Because um, the picture, if you pay attention to the season five roadmap here, it, has, uh, it looks like Sojourn's dog. So that's quite interesting, and I'm down for that. Their cinematic universe is really, really well done, and I, all their animations are phenomenal. I'm the surprised. Bastion one made me sad. All of them make me sad. Yeah, you're right. They're, they all are kind of depressing. I love... But, well, also something for Season 5 that's coming. Um, Summer Games is coming back. I'm a huge fan of Lucio Ball. You've probably never played it. I did, yep. One of my favorite game modes, and I'm really hoping that comes back, but we also get something new, because that's something, again, Overwatch 1 lacked every season, that every event that returned. It was always the exact same game mode returning each time. Yep. It never added anything new, really. Love me Lucy of all. Love it. And I want it to come back, but I want something new this time. And that's fair. Another addition to Season 5, apparently, is we're finally getting the fire returning. I am on fire. Yeah. <laughs> the, I don't even no. know why we took that out. I'm just... Honestly, I didn't even realize in the time that I played. Not that it didn't matter to me, but like I just, it seems like something that fundamentally would always just, be there. It's just one of those things that they just kind of like the quality of life stuff that would get added to a game that was in Overwatch One got taken out. Your on fire system, your your like 
border outline for your level is gone. That's so weird. Your like in lobby credits where like you like look at everyone's like stats and everything and like your bat I know like gold medals and stuff aren't a thing anymore, but why not have an end title screen where you can see everyone's stats all up in like the thing or something. That makes I don't sense know. to me. The, all that stuff is gone. There's nothing anymore. That's yeah, I mean that's that seems standard issue that like if you're gonna upgrade your game you want to keep everything that people liked. Yeah. And maybe there were some changes, like you know, you said the gold medal stuff's gone. Yeah, that's fine. But Whatever. you could have reworked that system into something else. Yeah, that's I, fair. I don't know. I mean, fundamentally, I love Overwatch. Overwatch Two is great. I love Five v Five, though. There's some things that I don't like about it, like how now there's one less tank. I don't like one right. shots anymore. Right. One shots were fine in the six v six format with two tanks, but I don't like Hanzo. Just before anyone does that, watches this and calls skill issue. I am top 500. Not on PC, though. Yeah. Just on Xbone. But yeah. technically consoles now at this point. Because well, they're collabed. Right. Uh, but, you know, speaking of the uh, 6v6 being gone, we also have a 5v5 mini comp season, which is, you know, I mean, if you're into competitive stuff, that's cool. I used um, to be. Finally, the last thing we have is the uh, creator workshop mode. And, a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, can you explain to me what that is? I'm pretty exactly? sure the create a workshop mode is, well, at least the workshop mode that I'm aware of is like for like custom games purposes. But afterwards, we get some Season 6 info, which is just right around the corner after 5, and this is when the so-called PvE comes into play. For the PvE that we are getting. And as I said in the beginning, a lot of the stuff that we were promised is no longer being given to us right so the whole point of no content and having a drought of content was for nothing because the way that the story missions aka the pve that's working now we knew that this part was coming like the whole like story mission based where like we follow our characters and it actually has canon things that was always promised alongside all the other stuff all the other stuff got scrapped right besides this but also we were promised that the story missions would all come at once. We would have all so this... So it would be like a campaign. Uh, like basically a whole new game, a whole campaign game. Okay. Play. But it looks like we're getting it by Battle Pass. So we're going to get like a chapter. Gotcha. Each so. season. And I imagine... It does say story missions, so it could potentially be more... I'm, you know... My, my expectations are low right now because I'm not getting my hopes up anymore. That's fair. That, I, that I was completely I, fair. It's funny because like I want to look to the future and be like and be hopeful for this franchise or this game. I guess not franchise, this game. And I still play it, no matter how many times this game has disappointed me. I still stick with it because I'm really good at the game and I love the game. I love the combat. I love the mechanics. The game sense you need for it is fun. And I always have a fun time, either if I'm playing competitively with the Grandmasters, or I'm just chillaxing with characters I'm trash with, down in, like, diamond play and quick play. Outside looking in, I've always been, like, excited for PvE. That was always, like, my, like, yeah. you know, outside in, I was like, oh, you know, I haven't been into Overwatch here lately. I'll come back when I've got more stuff to do outside of just playing. P yep. You know what I mean? I'll play the PvE stuff. That'll be fine. Or, or that would be fine. And I'm still optimistic... In the sense of, like, they still, like, I saw a quote where it was like, we still have these, you know, these missions completed. Yeah. Um, we like the structure of the mission. We also have, like, really interesting enemies to fight and, you know, new enemies to deal with. I think that would be so cool. I, I think as far as, like, the PvE modes that are in the game now where you're facing the AI, it comes off as really simple. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm really excited for, you know, possibly more intricate enemies, you know, more challenging opponents than are just you know health or damage sponges. Yeah, and um, I'm with you there. So I'm I'm curious to see how that works out in such a way. It's so just I'm gonna breathe you know some positivity as yeah. far as that goes. It's not like I'm fully looking at this in a negative light. It's just really hard as a person who's been with this game since the beginning to be told all these things. And the things I was most excited about in the PVE was the skill tree. This replayability, being able just to kind of like play like horde mode and just kill things with your buddies and be able to like level up your characters. And then you'd be able to do that with all the heroes right. and all the heroes that come get added right. later. You'd be able to do it with them. And it's like, there's a whole lot of fun to be had there. And they just never told us that they scrapped it until today. You and know, that just that, that's a low blow, man. 
It's sad. It's unfortunate to hear. And that is, you know, the story missions that are still promised will be coming in season six. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we've talked about, supposedly from then onward. Yeah. Or at least presumably. I, I'm just curious to see what we get. I'll, I'll judge it after we see what PvE stuff we get and what it's like. Because if we're doing another Junkenstein's Revenge... Yeah, stuff like that, and no, that will not be fun. That uh, will not be A it. small cutscene right before that no. all four players have to skip. No, that'll be dumb. No. But season six, for getting uh, all the PvE stuff, we're getting a new support. Seems pretty cool. We've got a new support. We don't really know too much about that. We've got Hero Mastery. We've got Flashpoint, which is the a map. new map. And then, you know, some smaller things. We've got a firing range, which is a revamped thing, oh, nice. correct? Uh, player progression system, which... That could mean a couple different things. I'm hoping that we do something good with player progression because right now it's not it. You do the battle pass and that's it. That's, and that's it. So are you hoping for more of like, what What do you hope for? I don't As, as like a I, lapsed Overwatch player. It sucks because I know it's not going to be what it's going to be. But like back in the day, man, you play the game, you leveled up. You got a loot box. You got like all different types of rewards. An event came around. You leveled up. You could get a loot box for the event and right. then you could get stuff from the event. I would say, like, give me a loot box back and let me get some random stuff that I might not have, but right. they're not going to do that. So, like, that ship has sailed. It's long gone, unfortunately. And I don't know, as far as, like, player progression systems, maybe bring borders back, maybe? I I don't know what else they could really do that would be interesting. I You know, as someone who isn't strictly familiar with the exact state of Overwatch as of right now, it's interesting to think that maybe it as you say, outside of just Battle Pass stuff. And finally, the last two things that they really talk about are, like, Overwatch Anniversary, which that's yep. that's a that's a themed event every year, yeah, right? Every that's year. That's, like, gold yeah. skins. They've never had a new event since the first year. It's all just been the same. It's always the same. But there are obviously new skins and stuff every time. But right. But honestly, though, Overwatch 2's like, events have been lacking very much. Because in Overwatch 1 days, when you had an event, usually there was, like, I don't know, don't quote me on this, but like six to eight legendary skins for characters. Nowadays, you each, like Christmas and Halloween, I'm pretty sure we're just two legendary skins. Ooh. That's it. Nice. And unfortunately, we don't know anything else, but fortunately, we do know that there is supposedly more for season six. Um, that's all we know is that there is promise to be more, you know, talking points. But as of right now, that all, that's all there is that we can talk about today. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, for season seven and onwards, which is potentially eight, nine, yep. however long it takes them to get this stuff done, onward. we have a little um, list of different things that we're not really sure to gauge if it's going to be sooner rather than later. later. Yeah. But the earliest any of this stuff will be is season seven. seven. So, and I just want to put out here that, like, and I, I honestly agree with this because DPS got a lot of characters, a lot of heroes in Overwatch 1. So, like, if you look at the... The ratio. Yeah, the ratio like, boom, between. Boom, and then, poof. So, like, like in here, the first thing they said is a new tank hero from Season 7 onward. And I'm cool with that. Getting new supports and new hero, uh, tank heroes makes sense to fill out that gap of, right. like, how much of a DPS role there is. How many I thought characters. the idea was to do a new hero every season. It was at first, but now they're doing every other season. And then a map for the ones that aren't heroes. So, gotcha. So we can assume then that that's going to be past season seven yeah probably because season six is support so unless they change their mind but i i want more dps but at the same time i do want to fill those gaps first because supports and tanks are like my least favorite role but if you find one that's but if i play, find someone that yeah you know like add more characters and add it to where more people want to play those roles because there's more characters to pick from right but other than that you got the uh new collaboration event which is another limited time mode. Yep. That probably, that strikes me more in line with something like Junkenstein's. Yeah. Collaboration being something like that. Or could be collaboration in the sense of crossover. I've heard Overwatch, you know, or like directors talking specifically about Listen. wanting to do Listen. crossovers with different brands. Aaron Keller or anyone from the Overwatch team, if you somehow managed to watch this and you are still here... Give me a ghost face reaper skin. Thank that, you. That would be pretty clutch. So that would be really cool. We have a new control map, a new winter event. So that, you know. I mean, all the events you would expect to come back, they're coming back. Right. I mean, let's be real. But these are new versions, so hopefully that's I mean, something cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're, they're promising more cinematic debuts, which I'm really excited for. I know it has nothing to do with gameplay or game stuff, but 
cinematics are always really well done props to all the animators props to the story writers and everything they always make you tear up man i swear they're right. so well done another thing here we have a new hero mastery mission or new hero mastery missions i should say and those are multiplayer so that probably lends a little more credence to talking about the hero masteries from earlier which they're okay. probably small missions that are dedicated to certain heroes potentially so, that's cool. Speaking of specific heroes, my favorite hero, Roadhog, is getting reworked. Oh, my God. Um, and then they will you also heard see here, you the... You heard it here, folks. This man said his favorite hero is Roadhog. Yeah, I enjoy winning. And also... Oh, my God. <laughs> we see the return of fan favorite modes, which that could really just mean... Um, I don't even know. I was going to make a joke about Overwatch fans, but I feel like I don't need this. Go for link. it. Uh, Go for it. I want to hear it. I'm an Overwatch fan. What's her favorite mode? Her favorite fan mode? Let's hear it. Definitely not the shower mode. Anyway. Well, we talked about Roadhog getting reworked. Thank fucking God, but Sombra's getting reworked. I, I hate that character so much. She's just like, hack, later. Hack, later. She's, you not, like that? she's not as annoying as the first season of Overwatch 2, but she's still annoying. So we've got Sombra and then Roadhog being reworked. Roadhog is listed first, so I assume that is meant to be done first. Well, he's been the biggest problem of Overwatch 2 since like season 2, since Zarya got nerfed a long time ago. And, like she was running the comp boards for days because of her bubbles. You know, kind of overtuned. But then Roadhog came into the meta and then he was just hook one shot, hook one shot, hook one shot, hook one shot, hook one shot. That's completely fair. No. I'm going to loop that out yeah, and put yeah. that on Twitter later, so you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, but outside of that, we've got the uh, debut of some cinematic trailers, which are not trailers, just cinematics, I should say. So that's always nice to see more uh, story stuff. We've also got the lore codex being added, which for the ever-expanding and multimedia story of the game and like, these that's, different things. That's one thing I always loved about this game is like the subtle telling of the lore and the story within the It'd be nice universe. to have confirmations and stuff all in one place. I, yeah. lo I love not having to go outside of the game for the information. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that, that will be nice. I think that will be a really welcome change, in my opinion. I don't know. There's a lot of positives to look forward to, but it's just it's a big punch in the gut when you just been here for the whole time. Like, for you, it's not that big of a deal because you're like... I'm not. Oh, I'm just no. a casual player. I, I, was, you know. I was extremely excited for the PVE stuff. Um, but yes. like, even though stuff got cut, you're still like, it's all right. I still get some PVE, right? Like, it's not as big of a blow to like newer players, right? Or like chiller players that don't really care that much versus just cool people, guys. Yeah, versus the no shower type like me mm -hmm. who's played the game nonstop for like six years and grinded all the way up so much. God, it took so long to get up there. I get all the way up to the highest of the ranks and. Grim has been seven years. <laughs> well, maybe not know. seven full years, but... I mean, I love Overwatch. I love the Overwatch team and, uh, you know, all the people behind it. A lot, of, especially the art team. The art team carries this game hard. This game has and an incredible art style. I love the reworks that they did from Overwatch 2. A lot of the reworks too. are de great, but there's still core issues. Like, one-shots need to go, in my opinion. I don't think they're healthy for the game anymore. And there's, like, certain things like Zenyatta Discord with one tank. You just... Look, put it on the tank and that's it. You don't have to worry about it. You just murder the tank and it's over. GG. That's fair. I just there's a lot of issues that are that still need worked out, but they have fixed a lot of the issues like Roadhog stuff. Right. Like Roadhog being a menace. And it Aria seems like they're going to make him a viable but balanced character in yeah. the future as well. And like Sombra's a menace right now, and they're reworking her at some point. It just right. It's weird because like it's so season season seven onward, and it feels like that's a little too much time ahead. Like maybe try to get a little bit done a little bit more done faster that's fair but i don't know we'll see where we go from here but that's the news today and i'm more negative than i am positive with the low blow of the pve and the skill trees and all that but it is what it is man so there you have it folks that is the state of overwatch 2 as <laughs> of right now um i think i can end this video in a way you know, that's going to be as positive as possible for this scenario, or what we can do. Something I would like to do, and I want to do this with your help, and whether this be something that we do on this channel or not, mm -hmm. I want to do a, not retrospective, but a review of how is Overwatch now. Like after and, the PvE comes out a little bit, and after we... Yeah, so we, yeah, have, yeah, yeah. we have a lot of insight on stuff that we talked about today, as it will be in past tense. 
stuff of how the game has changed and evolved from A, Overwatch, to Overwatch 2, two. and then Overwatch 2 to Season probably 6 or 7 by the time we're doing it. Yep. And I think we'll have a really good basis on, you know, where the game is at. And, you know, you can fully, you can turn me right down, right here, right on live. Okay. If you want to, but I, w- I would like to do a co-review with you for this. For just Overwatch, Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2. Yep. I'm down, man. You're down? Yeah. Once the PvE comes out, then we can fully give it a review. I think okay. once the PvE is out, that's that's it. And like I said, I'm a big Overwatch player, but like, and I love the game, and I love competitive, and I love just casually playing with my friends. And even as a big time player, there's a lot of faults here. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because this game used to be one of the most anticipated games back in the day. It won Game of the Year in 2016. Right. And like, look where we are now. I know. Like before we went free to play in Overwatch 2, Overwatch 1 was dead at the end of its lifespan. Yeah. It was it was gone. Breath of fresh air, but it ultimately it just feels like microtransactions are what they want now. Yep. It's kind of seeing what the sole focus of what... And like I said, I don't put that really too much on the Overwatch team. I just feel like it's the higher-up. Right. The Blizzard, like the Blizzard higher-ups, and they're like, get this out, do this, do that, we want money. Right. And, you know, it's these are all things that I feel like are going to come into play when we do, like, a yep. review. Uh, it's I think the best thing I can say is that we'll have the interest of a casual fan and a hardcore and a, fan. And, a hardcore fan, and yeah. I think that's the best... It's Clash. kind of like 3D, 3D glasses, like the red and the blue. We have yep. those two things. That's the importance. perfect. Okay. We... <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching this episode. Um, it's not really an episode. It's not like a series we do. But we do do a series of um, podcasts. Yeah, if you um, like movies. Popcorner. Yep. Uh, not really sure. Uh, good. Bye. See ya. <laughs>